Hi, I'm Marius Masselar with Tuts Plus. I'd like you to join me as I tackle one of the most common issues we encounter when working with our images, bad white balance. There are a handful of excellent ways to avoid white balance issues when you're shooting, including manually adjusting in camera, using a gray card, or working with professional lighting. But even the best photographers sometimes end up with images that require white balance corrections after the fact. I'm here to help, and using the powerful Aperture image editing software from Apple, I'll walk you through a few techniques for fixing even the most severe white balance problems. Let's get Aperture opened up and take a look at my first example image. As always, I recommend you shoot and use raw images wherever possible, as it affords you the maximum flexibility in your editing. This photo of a cuttlefish was taken at an aquarium in Ireland, and as with most aquariums, the lighting situation was less than ideal. Shooting through glass produced only a bit of cloudiness around the edges, but the colors here are a bit off. It's a bit too warm and yellowy for my taste. Aperture gives us a variety of options for handling white balance, so flip over to the Adjustments tab with me and let's have a look. If you don't see a white balance section in your adjustments list by default, click Add Adjustment and find white balance. Aperture's white balance module includes two partly automatic white balance correction algorithms and a manual mode. The two partly automatic modes are called natural gray and skin tone. As you might imagine, the skin tone mode is ideal for portrait work or any photos where accuracy of skin color is the priority. Aperture automatically detects faces and uses those areas of the image to optimize white balance in a way that preserves natural looking skin. Since my cuttlefish is not human, we'll opt for natural gray mode instead. This algorithm attempts to identify image elements that are a neutral gray color, just like the gray cards you would use to set custom white balances while you're shooting. In either of these two modes, you're effectively trusting Aperture's assessment of the scene and are therefore given only a simple warmth slider to make adjustments with. Since my cuttlefish photo is only a little bit too warm, Aperture has done a pretty good job of interpreting the image. I can simply pull back the warmth slider to more accurately reflect the real colors my white balance work is effectively done. That was pretty easy. Now let's look at an image where the white balance was too cold. This shot of a deer in the afternoon is positively chilly, which robs it of some of its beauty. For this image, we'll let Aperture take a stab at fixing things on its own by using the auto button. Many of Aperture's adjustment modules have this button, and for white balance it's available in all three modes. Staying in natural gray, I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. Not too much. If I'm unhappy with the result, I can always undo and dial a better level in using the warmth slider. My final image is really problematic. It was shot at night in a chalet with some awful lighting, and I didn't bother setting a custom white balance in the camera before taking the shot. As you can see, it's left me at the mercy of Canon's infamous cheese whiz approach to low light white balance. Again, since we have no faces in the frame, I'm going to stick to natural gray for the white balancing mode. But this time, you'll notice that when I pull the warmth slider to the cool side, Aperture is giving me a dreadful green cast. Now, you'd never know it, and neither does Aperture, obviously, but this sickly looking blanket was actually a perfectly crisp neutral gray color. And this is where we encounter our savior, the eyedropper tool. Before I do anything else, I'm going to use this button here to reset the white balance adjustment to its default. Since we can identify an area of this image that's neutral gray, we can help Aperture adjust its algorithm accordingly. Click the eyedropper and use it in conjunction with the loop to locate a neutral gray area. In this case, I'm selecting one of the lighter portions of the blanket. Having done that, Aperture immediately presents me with a properly balanced image. Almost. Do you notice those purple highlights? Those are thanks to a TV that was on in another part of the room, but I don't want it in my image. So now what? It's time for the third white balance mode, the manual mode. Use the drop down menu to select temperature and tint. Aperture reverts to the original image when you change white balance modes, so we're back to cheese whiz land. Using the eyedropper, let's once again select the neutral gray area of the blanket. Now we've ended up with the same correction as before, but this time we've got both a temperature and a tint slider that we can use to finesse the white balance and remove some of that magenta cast. Once you've got the basic white balance corrected, you can still make specific color adjustments. Colors may be accurate now, 
But what if you want less of a blue presence? More orange for those sunset shots. Or, in the case of this puppy portrait, no more magenta highlights. For that kind of editing, we turn to the color module. Add one to your list using the Add Adjustment menu. Here, you'll see six hue boxes and a variety of sliders. Each hue has its own set of sliders so you can individually adjust each. I'm going to click over to the magenta box and use the saturation and luminance sliders to remove some of the purple on the couch. In the color module, the eyedropper tool allows you to select specific hues from your image to adjust. So as a final touch, I want to address the minor color cast remaining on the right side of the blanket. Using the eyedropper to select the color in a different slot, I can now use the sliders to attenuate it a bit and get a more natural looking balance of colors. We can continue to tweak colors to suit specific preferences, but using Aperture's handy white balance tools, we've now managed to repair some common white balance issues so we can get on with the rest of the editing workflow. Remember, the goal is always to get images as close to perfect as you can straight out of the camera. But if something goes wrong, you can rest a bit easier now knowing that you're equipped to rescue your images from white balance trouble.